you've got a Bible with you, I want you to turn in that Bible to Luke chapter number 7. And Next week we'll be celebrating our graduate Sunday. We'll uh, be, of course, this very important time uh, for our high school graduates and our college graduates. They are, uh, of course, turning a major corner in their life. Uh, so we want to make sure that we take this time and, and recognize them and uh, charge them, and we want to pray for them. Uh, so you be praying for them this week. I tell you, they face a lot in this life, and I want you to remember them every day, and you think about them all this week as uh, we're going through graduation. You think about their poor old mamas and daddies. It's going to have to turn loose of them. Because I tell you what, boys, it ain't easy. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You've already been there. So you pray for us. Lord, help me now. Back in Luke chapter number 7, uh, the Bible um, in verse number 11, Luke 7, verse number 11. You found that, go ahead and stand to your feet. Well, God's good to us, isn't He? Let's read uh, this morning beginning in verse 11. Word of God says it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. And now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier. And they that, were, they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying, that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. Father, it is good to be able to stand where I stand this morning. Lord, I know that it's not because of, Lord, anything that I've done that you've chosen me to stand here, but... Lord, I, I believe today it's by grace alone that we're saved through our, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done on Calvary's cross. So Lord, I thank You so much that He's made a way, You've made a way for us to be made right with You. And God, I thank You for not only that, but You've chosen us to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. And Lord, You've given me this great opportunity. I don't know why. Lord, I'm unworthy to stand where I stand today. You know my heart. Lord, I love these people and I love your word. And I thank you so much for the love that you put in me. It hadn't always been like this. But God, I thank you for the last 15 years. Lord, I thank you so much for these mamas this morning as I, I look out and I see their dedication. Lord, there's so many families that don't have a mother to bring their children to church. God, I pray that you'd bless them, everyone that's in attendance this morning. I pray that you would help us to be good to them, God, as children, as husbands, that we would look after the needs of these women, that you'd bless them, especially today. God, keep your hand upon them. Lord, I think about even the testimonies we've already had. Some this morning have... Lord, they've had to say good night to their mother. And Lord, they've left them in your keeping. And Father, we look forward to seeing them again. Lord, I, I look forward to the reunion that you'll give us. Lord, with our grandmothers and our mothers that are gone on. And we thank you so much for the promise that you give us in the Scripture. Lord, that if we put our faith and trust in you, we, we Lord, we don't grieve as those that have no hope, but we know who we've trusted. And Father, we believe that you're able, Lord, to deliver. Father, I believe that you're able to save to the uttermost. 
Lord, I pray for there's one in our midst lost today. Lord, would you draw them to you? Lord, I can't save anybody. I couldn't talk anybody into to, to being saved. And even if I could, somebody else could talk them out of it. So God, I ask you this morning, Lord, as I've read this scripture, make me attentive to your word. I've got some things in mind that I'd like to say that I believe that you've laid on my heart. But none of those things that I have are nearly as important to, as what you want to say. So God, I pray you'd make me obedient to you. Father, I pray that as your people, God, that we'd be obedient no matter what you may say this morning. Help us now. We need you and we love you. In Jesus' precious name, all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to share with you this morning for the next few minutes on this topic, a miracle for a mama, a miracle for a mama this morning. As we think about this text that we read and Maybe many of you have read this text multiple times throughout your Christian life. And let me just take a minute to say that you ought to be reading the Word of God. You ought to be in the Word of God every day. We know that, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Read it every day. Study it, the Word of God every day. Meditate on the Word of God every day and see if God won't use that to help you. See if God will not bless you. I promise you that he will. You, you see as we read the word of God today, we find a heartbroken mother. We find a heartbroken mother. How many of you have ever seen a heartbroken mother at some time in your life? I, I'll be honest with you, probably the most Probably the, the biggest group of people, if I lumped them together, that ask me to pray about something on a regular basis, if I could name any one group, if I could uh, uh, typify one group, it would be mothers. Now, I have so many mothers come to me and want me to pray for who? Their children. They, they, they want me. Not that fathers don't. Sometimes fathers do, but I'll be honest with you. You women think so much of those children and you believe that God can help them. And I've seen so many heartbroken mothers in the past because of poor decisions that children have made. And I've seen mothers pray and pray and pray for years and decades. Sometimes, uh, you know, multiple decades for a child just believing that God will help them. And there may be somebody here this morning. You, you've got a child on your mind. Maybe, maybe your child has some sort of sickness. Maybe there is some sort of affliction. Maybe they're going through a hard time. Maybe they have made some poor choices and they're, uh, uh, they're living out the consequences of those decisions, but they're still your child. And you, you love them so much. And I would encourage you you, no matter what your child may do, no matter what decision they may make, sometimes it breaks your heart, but don't ever throw that youngin away. Never, ever, ever give up on a kid. Never get, there's folks in this room that'll testify right now, several folks as a matter of fact, uh, that, that their mother prayed for them for, for decades and, and they believe without the prayers of their mother they wouldn't be where they are today with the Lord. I tell you what, when I, when I grew up and, and, and yeah, I think the best testimony is for somebody to go to church all their life, but we didn't go to church. We didn't go to church on a regular basis. Maybe occasion, but I am thankful that, that my mother talked about the Lord in the home, that she talked about the Lord Jesus Christ, that she taught us to believe in the Bible. And I know uh, that, that God is sovereign and God at the right time drew me to Him. And I thank the Lord for that, but there are so many today that have no mother to read the scripture to them that have no mother to pray with them the way that you have. But there are so many today, godly women that are heartbroken over maybe, uh, maybe something that's happened in the life of a child. Now, this lady that we're talking about today, she was a heartbroken mother. Now, why, why was she heartbroken? Well, it's pretty easy to see the main cause of her heartbreak. She was heartbroken because of a loss. Right? She had lost her son. Verse number 12 says this, and now 
when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, uh, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. So she had lost the only son that she had. Now I've been by the, the graveside, and you have too, of mothers that had had to give up their children. Now I just, uh, you know, that's the saddest thing I believe that I have ever seen. And I'm not sure that it ever gets any easier, even when uh, the children are uh, uh, adults. I'm not sure that it gets any easier. That's the saddest thing to look into the eyes of that grieving mother when she's had to bury a child. And I can imagine Imagine why, why uh, Jesus was so compassionate about this one lady. She, she had given up her son. She had had to uh, bury her son. You think about her maybe uh, uh, rocking him when he was a child, feeding him there, uh, taking care of him, looking after him all those years. Loved that child. And, and, and then she had to, to give him up. So she, she was heartbroken. And the Bible says that there were crowds that gathered around her. Right, we know uh, that Romans twelve fifteen says that we should rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. So there was a crowd gathered around to try and comfort this mother and and to to weep with her there, to mourn with her there. You see, she was heartbroken because of her loss. Not only that, she was heartbroken somewhat because of her loneliness. Now she had lost her closest. Ken. She had lost, not only did she bury a child, but she buried her only child. She, she didn't have a husband. The Bible says that she was a widow, so she didn't have anyone to hold her. She didn't have anyone to comfort her the way that, uh, the way that a husband would do, the way, uh, the way that her spouse would do. She didn't have anybody to provide that. We know uh, some of you today, maybe you're thinking about your children and, and while they may not be uh, physically separated from you in death, many of us may have children that are rebellious and they're, they're still dead in their trespasses and sin and you know what that feels like and it breaks your heart much like this lady and many of you don't have anybody to help you, to, to comfort you. She was heartbroken because of her loss. She was also heartbroken because of her loneliness. She had no one to come along and help her. I remember over, uh, I, I think it's back um, in, in, in Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter number 12, that uh, when you, you remember there when, when David and Bathsheba's young son died. If you, if you remember that, it says that, that David wept and fasted, and I'm sure that Bathsheba did as well, but once he heard the child had died, he washed himself, anointed himself, and he went in and he comforted his wife. That's what the Bible says. He comforted his wife. He was there for her. They, they drew together, but this lady didn't have that. She didn't have this kind of comfort. She was heartbroken there, a widow who had lost her only son. She was uh, heartbroken because of her loss, but also because of her loneliness, but also because of her lot in life. Now, many folks today, I've seen many uh, Christians that are heartbroken because uh, of circumstances like this, but this lady's lot in life, it wasn't much. She didn't have anybody anymore to look after her, to care for her. That son, especially in this culture, uh, without a husband to look after her, the son would have been her primary caretaker. He, he would have been there for her. He would have tried to provide for her. He would have taken care of her. And many of you know what that's like. Maybe many of you in this room, you're taking care uh, uh, of an elderly parent. You're going through uh, the role as a caretaker and you know something about what that is but this lady had nobody I'll be honest with you, I've seen lots of folks at this stage in life that had no children, that had no close relation, uh, no close relationship with anybody to help them, and it's really, it's a sad lot. Nobody there for them. That's where this lady was, and that's why the Lord had 
compassion on her. She had no one to care for her future needs. When she got to where she was unable to look after herself, she didn't have anybody to do that. Now, I, I, you know, that's very important to Jesus because if you fast forward a few chapters and find Jesus on the cross, we know uh, that even though the Bible doesn't tell us specifically what happened to Joseph, we know that Mary's husband, Joseph, died somehow and that it was the responsibility of Jesus as the youngest son to look after his mother. And even while he was being crucified on Calvary's cross, he thought about her needs and, and he, he committed her, he committed the needs of his mother uh, to, to, to his beloved disciple John. He, he told her, he said, woman, behold thy son. Uh, he said, son, well, uh, behold thy mother. And from that day, the Bible says that he took her there to his house. But you find a, a heartbroken woman here that had lost her son. You find a lonely woman here. You find a woman full of loss and her Lot was not very good in this life. We don't have to look very far to find somebody that's heartbroken, do we? So we, we see not only is there the heartbreak of this mother, but there's also the help here of the master. And I want to try to stress this for you for just the next couple of minutes. There, there's a lot of heartbreak in the world. There's a lot of heartbroken mothers and, and fathers in the world. But listen, there's a lot of help if we put our faith in the master. Verse number 15 shares that with us. The Bible tells us very clearly, and he that was dead, or well, back up in verse number 14, and it said, Jesus said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. But you find the, the help of the master there. The, the help of the master came this way. Well, number one, the master was aware of the need. He was aware of the need. He he was aware enough to help. You find his awareness to help here. And I want to share with you, no matter what you may be heartbroken about today, do you know that the master knows your need? He's aware of your need. He knows where you are. He he knows exactly what you face today. I may not know your need. And, and sometimes, to be honest with you, as we share with others, as we pray for them and share our needs, sometimes we begin uh, to be burdened down with the needs of others. And I, I quickly realize I can't meet every need, Brother Anthony. You can't meet every need. But we have, uh, we have a Father in heaven that loves us so much and He's aware of every need. There's nothing that's ever befallen you that God didn't know about. And he knew this woman. He knew her heart. And he knew her need at that time. And he knows your need today, no matter what you may be struggling with. If you've got a loved one today that's sick, listen, the Lord knows your need. He's aware of your need. You've got a loved one that's going through the tough time. You've got a child that's made some poor decisions. You've got a grandchild on the wrong course. You cry out to Jesus. You see, he's aware of the need. Now, he knew of their need and he knows your need. He, he, he had compassion on her there. The Bible says in verse number 13, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Aren't you, aren't you just encouraged by the compassion that the Lord has for his people? And I tell you, it, 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 it would be something to go through this life and have to deal with all the things that we do and not think that there was a God in heaven that was moved. That, 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 that was aware, that, that was available to us. Verse number 14 shows us his availability. It says, and he came and touched. It's what the Bible said. Not only did he have uh, compassion, but you, you, you find that he was available. He, even though he was, on, he, he was on business, he was traveling. He, he'd been teaching. He'd been preaching. He'd been healing folks. And, and you look around you, and I tell you, God's still at work today. I don't know if, you, if you're noticing evidence, but I see where God's working today. I see places where God's working. See, but the thing is, God's never too busy to help you out. You know, I've heard people say, well, I, I just know, I, you know, I just don't pray about this and that because I, I just don't want to bug the Lord. I don't want to feel like, listen, I want to tell you something, friend. You, you're not a bother to the Lord. 
He's not limited like we are. He's your God. He's your God. He's a person. He's not some genie sitting up in heaven that you can just go to and rub the lamp every once in a while. But he knows about your need. And listen, he wants to get involved. He's available for you. That's something to think that the God of all creation. You ever look out at the stars and the sky at night and think about all the creation? You ever read some of the things maybe scientists have wrote about the vastness of creation? I'm not a science scientist by any stretch of the imagination, but I tell you what, I can look around this old world and think, man, I tell you what, God must be something else. If he could stick all this into existence and he could make it work the way that it, it amazes me how the body works. It, 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 the, the, the more you study about, about the, body, the human body, and I don't know that much, to be honest with you. Some of you are recording that so you can play it back to me. I don't know that much, but I know enough to know it's a wonder. I tell you what, it's a wonder we ain't all sick and dead, to be honest with you. There's a, the body is so intricate the way that it works, but the God that did all that, He's available to you. All you got to do is come in the name of Jesus. And you can come to Him anytime. I tell you what, friends, there's sometimes you, you, your mate may not be with you. They may have to work. They may be separated from you. And Listen, I want to tell you what, friends, sometimes you can't get a hold of your preacher. Y'all know I don't answer the phone half time, but I will call you back. Sometimes you can't get a hold of your preacher. He may not be there for you. But listen, the Lord Jesus Christ He's always there for you. You can get on your knees no matter where you are and you can reach out to Him and the same God that spun uh, creation into existence is available to you. And that's I tell you what, that's a miracle in itself. You find the help of the Master. His, his awareness, His availability, not only that, but His, I, I think I've already alluded to this, but His ability as well. He's able, the Bible says, He spoke and this young man, He said, I say unto thee, arise, and the young man did what? And you, he got up. Listen, I won't tell you. You cry out to God. God knows what you need, but you cry out to God for help. He's available to you, and He's able to do what you can. I want to tell you, friend, your, your, your child, they may, they may be rebelling. You may have a youngin' that's a, and there may be people here, I'm not just talking about your youngins there. There's people here probably got all kinds of afflictions that I don't know anything about. There's folks here that's got addictions. And, and maybe, I, I bet there's folks in the room, probably in a crowd this size, maybe that's addic addicted to alcohol, some kind of prescription drugs. There may be people here addicted to pornography. There may be people here that, that have all kinds of things that are afflicted with all kinds of things. Maybe there's somebody in your family, a, a grandchild or a child that's gone astray and you're embarrassed about that and, and listen you may not want to tell everybody what situation they're in but God knows and he's able to meet that need and listen he can save them to the uttermost if he says rise they'll yeah. rise Amen. they'll rise listen the preacher can't he, he can't get them straightened out and listen, if you think you're here today and, and you've got some of these problems and you're trying to turn over a new leaf and, and you're trying to get straightened out, hey, I, I, admire, I admire your courage to, to admit that you got a problem, but without the Lord, you'll never get straightened out either. I tell you what, but for the grace of God, this old boy right here would be a drunk. That's just the way I was headed. But you know, God, thank, thank the Lord, he stopped that. He put a stop to that. Fifteen years ago, he put a stop to that. And it's amazing how God will change your life. See, I couldn't do that. My mama couldn't do that for me. But the Lord could do that for me. And I'm thankful today. You, you see, he has power. Not, not only power over addictions, but he has power over the grave as well. You've lost a loved one. Hey, I want to tell you something. You see them again. They die in Jesus. You see them again. That's why you need to reach your children for Jesus. That's why you need to live for Jesus. You need to make sure that they know the truth. You say, preacher, I'm saved. Sometimes I don't live like it. Hey, I'm not doubting your word. I take you right at your word. But does your family see you living for Jesus? Because I tell you what, your, your ways will mean more 
to your witness and your words we. You tell them about the Lord all week, why you're living like hell, or you tell them like the Lord on Sunday, about the Lord on Sunday, live like hell, it'll be monkey see, monkey do. That's exactly what it'll be. You see it time and time again. The help of the Master. It said, He spoke, young man, I say unto thee, arise, and he that was dead sat up. Listen, if you're burdened down, listen, Jesus said, whoever sins, He said, you're a slave to that sin. You're a servant to that sin. But, 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 but whoever the Son shall make free, He'll be free Indeed, you see the Lord has the ability to turn those burdens over to get you after them under those burdens. Now, not only do you find the help of the master here, the heartbreak of the mother here, but you also find the honor of the masses. When you see God do a work that only God can do, you'll see God receive glory and praise for that work. Verse number 16 says this, And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God had visited his people. And the rumor of him went, through, went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. You see, when, when people see what only God can do, they'll praise him for who he is. The trouble is with us many times, we don't try to do anything that only God can do. We try to do what we can do and ask God to bless it. We, we make a mistake in that. What you find here, the object of this honor that I'm talking about is, is recognizing that the Lord only can do this. All those folks knew that this man was dead and nobody ever raised a man to life here. Jesus is the only one who had that power. So you find that they reverenced God. They respected God for that. They respected Him. And, it, and, and, and that flew out. Do you, do you find that a lot today? Do you find a lot of folks today with reverence and respect for the Lord? I'm, I'm afraid we, we're seeing the opposite of that. The objective of this honor, verse number 16 shows us that. It says, and glorified God to, to identify uh, Jesus as the Savior. That's what we know. John 10, 25 said, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe me not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. That's how you'll know who Jesus is. You know, incidentally, that's how you'll know when Jesus breaks in a life. Because he'll do something and only he can do and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you won't be perfect when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and many of you, maybe even most of you in this room are saved and you know that. But you won't be the man you used to be. You won't be the person you used to be. You won't, you won't, you won't be the mama you used to be if you know Jesus. I'm not the man. I'm not a perfect man. But I'm not the man that I was 15 years ago and I praise God for that. I thank God for breaking in. You know, I was a dead man. Dead in trespass and sin. Didn't even know it. Thought I was in pretty good shape. I thought, well, you know, I've never done anything much wrong. I take care of my family. Don't run around on my wife. Wouldn't do anything like that. I thought, well, you know, surely a loving God would not send me to hell. And the truth is, a loving God wouldn't send me to hell. That's why he gave Jesus that's why Jesus died, that I could have life. Now you see, my mama used to have a walking dead man for a son. But now she's got a son that lives. Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Listen, we're going to go down the road here in a little bit. We're going to go see my mama. We can't see Michelle's mama no more. She's with the Lord right now. Priest her funeral, she loved the Lord. She wasn't a perfect woman, but she loved the Lord, and I know we'll see her again. And I, I'm going to go right down the road here in just a minute. If we don't make it down the road to see my mama, I tell you what, my mama can know that she's going to see me again because I place my faith and trust in Jesus. How about you? I tell you what, this could be a miracle for mama today if you put your faith and trust in Jesus and listen, if you're a mama here today or a grandma, and you've got a, a child or a grandchild on your heart, 
I want you to come up here and hit the altar for them. You hit the altar and cry their name out. You think maybe they're not living right. Oh, preacher, what are they going to think if I come to the altar? Listen, they're going to think you're concerned about your youngins. They're going to think you're concerned about your family and you want to make sure that they know Jesus. Would you come today? Stand with us.